All right, all right, all right, everybody. How is everyone doing today? I am Karon, and we are here for another episode of uh, June Roll of the Die with all of the Stampin' Up! or the demonstrators from our Sunday playing from our Sunday group. So guys, let me, before I introduce everybody, our roll of the die uh, this month, we had to do use the in colors, whether the current ones or the previous ones. Bling, we had to incorporate fancy fold, congratulations and paper piecing. All righty, let me remove the spotlight here. Awesome, everybody take a minute, say hello. Introduce yourselves again. Hi, I'm I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Staten Island, New York, and I'm very excited to be here again on Roll the Die Challenge. Hi. Happy to have you. Hi, I'm Kathy Irvin. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm here in Katy, Texas, and I'm happy to be here. Awesome, and I am Karon. I am also a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I have been a Stamp demonstrator, actually this month of June will be seven years that I've been a demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And I'm also excited to take this hour to share with the other ladies um, what we made with the roll of the die element. All right, so this, let's put, let me bring everybody back on. So, <clears throat> What we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna end up having, um, Michelle's gonna start us off with her project, uh, followed by Kathy, and then I'll bring up the, the rear. I'll, I'll close everything out. Um, each of the ladies has 20 minutes to prepare, uh, to provide their presentation for you. And um, let's see what we got going. So I'm gonna go ahead and spotlight Michelle's, Michelle, I'm gonna give you about two seconds unless you want me to go straight to your workstation. What do you want me to do? Let's do it. All righty, I'm gonna go straight to the workstation. Okay, so our card this time for Roll the Die Challenge has a couple of elements. The dies landed on fun fold. So I have made my own fun fold for you. And paper piecing, in colors, congrats theme and bling. So those are our elements. So you'll see three cards using those basic themes. And paper piecing is basically taken and adapted from quilting. So it was English paper piecing, I believe is the term in quilting, but you're basically making a paper quilt. So you're stamping on patterned paper. So my card, my paper piecing is the most basic form of paper piecing, which is stamping on patterned paper. And what I'll be using today is the Slim Sayings dies, the Good Feelings, um, Slim Sayings stamps, sorry, Good Feelings stamps, oh. Rays of White, um, some dies, which are the stylish shapes. I'll be using the larger circle and the Basic Borders dies, which include a cloud die. So the Ooh. first thing you're going to need for this is some pattern paper. And I've chosen pattern paper from the Hues of Happiness and from Tea Boutique. And you're going to want to start on your card base. So when I'm making my own fun fold, I usually will create it out of our grid paper and then write all my dimensions and see how it looks and see if it works. Oh, that's cool. So I'll make myself a little template and then I'll always have that to refer back to. So that's a neat little tip if you wanna create your own shapes and cards and things like that. But that makes so much sense. I just don't do that at all. <laughs> I mean, I used to make templates out of actual cardstock that, you know, colors I didn't like or something like that, but using the grid paper helps you with the measurements. Perfect. So it's a little easier. So the first thing you're gonna start with is cardstock and that's gonna be your five and a half by 11 inch. I'm using Starry Sky as my in color and you're gonna score it at three and a half and seven and three quarters inches. So that's gonna give you your base for your fun fold and it's gonna close like so. 
fold it over. You know, you want to burnish your edges real good. And then we are going to do some die cutting on the actual card base. Hmm. So I'm not going to die cut now because I only have 14 minutes left because the intro, you stole some thunder from me, Caron. But I'll give you, a, I'll give you some time on the end. All right. If I need some, but I'm going to mm-hmm. try to do it. But here uh-huh. we go. We are going to take our borders die, this cloud shape. We're going to measure in on the three and a quarter inch side of our card base measure in one inch and then angle your your little border die from that one inch. And I'll say like a little over from the one inch so that when it folds over, it's gonna cover the gap. So after the one, I'm gonna place it here and then place it on the edge and run it through your stamp and cut emboss machine. And you're gonna have something like, by the magic of TV, like this. I <laughs> love the magic of TV. You love the magic of TV, right? So that's mm-hmm. going to be your lovely card base. So it's going to fold over. You see, because it's more than an inch, it's going to cover this little gap. And that's going to be uh, okay. your basic shape. So put that to the side. It will need that to do the rest of the card. But let's talk about the rest of the pieces that we're going to need. You're going to need two circles. So one is going to be from the T-Boutique DSP, and I cut the largest circle from the stylus shape dies. And you're going to need just your card base color, starry sky. So two circles. So that's your four by four, two pieces. And then you're going to need some basic white. So your basic white is going to be four by five and a quarter. And you're gonna need a three and a quarter by five and a quarter piece to mat your DSP. So those are gonna be your white pieces and your DSP from the Hues of Happiness is gonna be three by five. So you are going to stamp, actually stamp on your DSP and that's your paper piecing. So I'm gonna take my rays of light and I'm gonna stamp in crushed curry ink up good. You don't need the whole thing, but just in case you miss. <laughs> this is, I suggest mm. using a stamparatus for this size of a die. I just don't have the room with the video set up right now. To do <laughs> pushing things out, so I'm going to use the biggest block. And uh, pray for me. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to stamp this somewhere around here and hope we got it. We got it, see, it worked out. So that's gonna be one of your pieces. And then let's stamp the other piece, which is that little circle from T Boutique. We're gonna stamp our greeting, which is congrats to the graduate in Starry Sky Inc. Up. I'm going to do it at an angle like this. And congrats to the graduate. There you go. And while we're doing inky things and we have the ink out, let's do our inside sentiment on the four and a quarter by, wait, what is it? Four by five and a quarter white. And that's going to be, I'm so happy for you. Starry Sky Ink. Very, very nice coverage. You love when that happens. And we're done with our inks. Put that to the side and we're gonna take our matting piece and we're gonna mat this fella or lady, whatever you wanna call it. (laughs) And we can use some liquid glue. You can use stamp and seal. I lost my stamp and seal applicator somewhere in this mess. I don't know where it is. So we're going to use liquid glue. You know, when I saw your, your card, I didn't realize you had stamped that on DSP. That's gorgeous. Yes. You doubted my paper piecing, but yes, we used (laughs) 
The reason we did it this way on pattern paper is to get different colors. This is a quick, easy way to get different colors on your project without using a bunch of different colors of ink and coloring tools and things like that. That's what paper piecing is best for because you can get different patterns. It's great on um, character stamps. If you have a character and you want their clothes to be different patterns and colors, you just stamp them on different paper, pattern paper, cut them out, glue them down, and you've got a little paper quilt. So this piece, put that to the side to dry, and we are going to adhere. No. Okay, let's, let's give this a go. We're gonna adhere this kind of in the center. So you're gonna put glue on this portion, just on less than half of it. And then put some glue on your basic piece of circle here. That's starry sky on the back to cover up that pattern that doesn't really match. Ah, that is nice. The second piece of circle. And then that's gonna be basically that part. We need to mat this side. So this, just remember- Michelle, did you- cut your circle um, to mat or just to be exact as to your first one? Exact. So they're both going to okay. be exact same size, the okay. large stylus shape. Gotcha. Gotcha. And you're going to mat this on the three and a half inch side. So just remember one half is three and a quarter. And that's the one you're going to do your border. Three and a half inch size is going to be where you mat. I almost got that wrong today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put the sun a little bit to the top. Get me down. And that is that lovely part. Okay, we still have seven minutes. Let's see what we can do. All right, let's put the inside in. The complicated part of the fun fold is the gift card holder. So see if we have time to get to that. All right, so on my original card, let me get that for you. I used a little gift card holder that came in paper pumpkin that we oh. have because it matched and I thought it was pretty. So what you do is you fold the sides and then you'll glue those down onto this part of the card. So if you don't have one of these, cause you probably don't, you're gonna <laughs> want to make your own. So how do you make your own? You are going to take a piece of three by three and three eighths, DSP or cardstock, whichever you prefer. You are gonna measure on three sides, three eighths in left, right, and bottom. You are going to take a two and a half inch circle you're gonna flip this over and you're gonna trace around the circle. You're gonna put it at the top, put it three eighths of an inch in and trace around and then just put a little line right here to the edge because you're gonna cut all this away. You're gonna cut away a little bit up here at the top left. You're gonna cut away the bottom left and the bottom right. And then you're gonna score that. cut those edges away, and then you're just gonna have your little gift card holder. So I will show you, I made my own out of just some random paper. See, so you'll have something like this, and then you'll be able to glue it in to hold your card. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, not too hard, not too difficult. Now, this is where I screwed up the first time. <laughs> all wrong, make sure you only put the glue on the back after it's folded <laughs> on the uh, I had glued it all together so the gift card couldn't fit in there. Silly. Oh, Lord. Very silly. Oh. The mistakes that we make so that anybody that's watching us don't have, does not have to make those mistakes as well. <laughs> exactly. All right, so once that dries, that's gonna be your gift card holder. You got 
your sentiment inside. It folds over and now we need bling. I'm gonna use glossy dots. I love the glossy dots. They are exciting. Huh, I lost my take your pick tool. Huh, I lost <laughs> and the take your pick tool. Luckily, I have two take your pick tools. Kathy sent me one when I won a bingo. So oh, that's just place. Cool. Yeah, right? Place these wherever you'd like. I'm going to use three different sizes because it comes in four colors, three sizes. Place them around. I'm going to use three. And one more. Come on, little guy. Don't you want to go on the card? <laughs> uh, let's put it in here. All right. And that is the finished card. And we did it with it's to spare. How do you like awesome. that? Awesome. I like it. So and this just try. goes to show you, um, it just kind of gets to show you, let me take the spotlight off so we can all come on. That just kind of goes to show you that, um, you know, we can all take parts and pieces from everything that we have and make a card. You don't, it's not just because I'm using this set I only have to use that or because this, I only have to use that. You can mix parts and pieces um, with everything um, you have. All right. So we are getting ready to go to Miss Kathy. Kathy, do you want me to bring your face or just your, your workstation? What do you want to do? You're on mute. I had to put you on mute because I have my grandson here okay um, just my workstation if you don't mind not a problem there you go my friend okay well I'm not as prepared as Michelle I wish I was <laughs> but we are going to be making uh, a fun fold card which is one of the requirements I used some bling which is another and the end colors so this is the card that we're going to be making, um, hopefully. And there was another requirement. What was it? Paper oh, piecing. Oh, congratulations. Okay, so move this out of the way. And we're going to be using the Sweet Songbirds um, stamp set. In addition to the decorative circle punch, and the songbird punch. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is stamp the songbird onto a piece, as you see, I've been using this, onto a piece of my um, in color. Is it 2022, 2024 in color? Uh, designer series paper. And what I'm gonna do is stamp this little bird in Tahitian Tide onto some Tahitian Tide to get my area that I'm going to be using. I hope I stamped that right, I didn't to fit into the, let me try that again. It needs to go this way. Sorry about that. Did, did um, Michelle have extra time? Because I might need it. <laughs> <laughs> Three extra minutes, so it's, okay. you're only just starting your 20 minute clock now. All right, well, we're gonna cut this guy out using the stamp and I like to hold it upside down. Where is he? Now I'm gonna have to cut him out. I like to hold the uh, punches upside down so that I can get a good view of what's going on. Cause if you don't, and this one, I remember I had to trim with the angle of the, of the bird. So let's see if this one is right. Okay. 
dirt and I need a piece of, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I need a post note to get it in the punch. Yeah, I'm gonna put a piece of, um, what is this, post-it note. Anytime you have a piece, that's a good tip to show. If you have a piece that's not quite, where's his head, there it is. That's not quite fitting, just add a piece of a uh, toast, post-it, toast-it, post-it note to it. <laughs> Hopefully you can see that. I'm trying to get them lined up. I'm gonna go with this. All right, so now he's punched out. And then, and there's some other pieces that punched out, but we're not gonna use those because we're using the end colors. I just had them, what did I do with them? Well, one of the other things too, when you have directional uh, punches like that one that I think I've seen folks that make um, a template of yeah. the stamp of the punch. And then that way, whenever you're going to stamp, you have kind of have an idea as to how to line up um, the pieces when you stamp the, the image. That's true. Okay, so we're going to punch in sweet sorbet mm. for the beak. Gotta find him. Oh, here it is. <laughs> it's so tiny. We got these other pieces in the way. Okay, and then we're going to punch in. Um, I think this is Orchid Oasis. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna punch his wing. I want it, his belly, but I want it darker than the wing. And now it's gonna, let's see, yeah, now I got it. Where I can just punch out the belly. Hmm. So I've got his Oh, belly, is that what that was? <laughs> <laughs> I've got him and I've got his beak. Okay. So I think we're ready to make him set this aside. So what we're going to do is take his belly. And put a little bit of glue. You could put it on a dimensional if you wanted it just to, to be higher. Then, then the body of the bird. And we're going to line this up. And then we're gonna take his little wing. Look at you paper piecing. Oh, look at the bird. She's doing real paper piecing, by the way, people. No, she's just doing uh, another form. <laughs> Let's, let's go with that. And we're gonna put his, put his little wing here. Put it up too high at first. So I've got a little glue. Okay, and then I'm gonna need, need my take your pick tool because his little beak is so tiny. It uh -huh. is. And I just need, a, I mean, a tiny dot. There we go, the glue. And we're going to set him down. Oh, that was a tiny dot that was a little too big. It was scrunched <laughs> out, but that's okay. The, the glue dries clear. Clear. Let me still wipe it off. Okay. And then we're going to stamp his eyes. However, I'm not going to, I'm just uh, using these for kind of a placement. 
because I have something else that I want to use for his eyes. Oh, look at that. So those are his little eyes. Oh. That. But what I have for his eyes actually are these little gems. And forgive me, but I don't know the name of them. I think these came in a uh, paper pumpkin kit. We Once we finish making our uh, paper pumpkin, we usually have quite a bit of items left. So we use them oh, in I different remember. ways. Those were pretty. Oh, so now you got shiny, glittery eyes. Nice. Yeah. I thought these showed up quite a bit better than stamping, nice. but I needed to stamp them just to know I didn't want them to be looking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so the bird is done. Okay, so we'll set him aside to dry. Now, we're going to stamp. This is a piece of um, crumb cake. I think that's big enough. No, close enough. Thought I had another piece, but that's okay. And we're going to use browns. I'm going to use early espresso. Becca thinks your card is starting to be really cute. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see if I have a bigger piece because this one's, well, it'll work. I'm going to stamp this on the early espresso. But then I'm going to stamp it with soft suede. Huh. And I want to get just lightly off. If I can do that and watch it'll be exactly on. <laughs> <laughs> but I want it to be slightly off to, uh, oh, yeah, it works up down at the bottom. But these are tree tree twigs, so, you know, just stick it back on there if it's not right. And then I'm going to use my snips because there is no, there is no punch for the nest. And since I'm in a hurry, I'm just going to quickly cut this out. I'm not going to worry about all the twiggy sticking out and stuff. Okay, so the nest is ready. All right. Now, my center of my card, which I haven't done the card base yet, which that'll be next, is gonna be four by five and a quarter. Right out. I've already cut out and scored my card base. So I'm going to set that aside and get my card base. And this is a piece of um, apple, no, not apple, parakeet party. And what I've You know, I, that's becoming one of my favorite colors. I know, yeah. mine too. Mm -hmm. um, I scored it at one. Something's not right here because these don't look right. Let me double score these. It's supposed to be scored at one and then two. One. Okay, the one is not 
somehow that one is not correct. So score that again. Because so it's supposed to be scored at one and two. Okay, at the two, and that's on both sides. At the two, we're going to fold it in and burnish it. And then at the one, we're going to fold it out. Yes, I fold I scored that a little crooked, but this doesn't really matter because this is not going to show. Let me just finish that. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. Okay, and the reason I said they're not going to show is because I have these pieces that are going to go here. Okay. Oh. Uh -huh. So we're going to adhere. This is the um, Parakeet Party DSP Designer Series paper. So I'm going to. With that, I mean, and it's double sided. You could use either side. But since it's a bird, I thought I'd use the flowery side. Birds tend to like flowers. I kind of center that. I'm going to do it on both of them, give this one a little bit of time to dry. I totally think that the um, the in color or the regal subtles, the DSP that coordinates with those type, those pink colors, that's such an often overlooked item in, yeah. the, in the catalog. Everybody always goes for the other pattern papers, but everybody tends to overlook these packs and they are awesome. They are. And uh, I'm trying to get these even, but. Okay, so now we're going to take this one and we're not going to put glue on there. We're going to put it on here because if you try to put it on this, you'll mess up. Ask me how mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> and you're going to line that up with the outside and the top and bottom of the card base. Huh. Okay. And then we're going to do the other side, which this makes our fun fold. And this is why I said if that, that other, the uh, scoring and stuff on this side wasn't even, it didn't matter because they're covered up. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's our fun fold. Stop doing here, and it doesn't matter. I'm gonna put something over that. So it's supposed to close up, but I guess my measuring wasn't all that great. All right, so <laughs> now I was gonna put. Uh, I was gonna um, make this blue or a sky, blue sky. But I don't think I have time for that. So we're going to make a limb. Let me make sure this fits before I do all of that. It's my luck, it won't fit. <laughs> yeah, it fits perfectly. All right, so we're going to stamp this limb an early espresso. And I really should have my piercing mat. Where is it? It was right here. Now I don't see it, so I'm not going to worry about it. Oh, here it is. It helps when you're using photopolymer stamps to get the, a good stamp. Okay, so we're gonna come kind of low and stamp this. Okay. And 
And then, you know what? I forgot to get those out. The leaves. I'm going to put some leaves on the tree. Okay, so I need another block. So I'm just going to take my bird off. I'm going to use the parakeet party again. You could use um, granny apple green or any of the other greens, but since we're using the coat with uh, in colors, my leaves are going to be parakeet party. And they just line up nice like that. Okay. And then nice. on the bottom here, let's see. I'm going to go to early espresso. You could use black or whatever you want. But early espresso is a nice dark color and it's right here. And we're going to stamp the sentiment, which says, Congratulations, it's your special day. Was that out of the um, the same stamp set, Kathy? All the everything that I'm stamping came out of the uh, Sweet Songbird stamp set. Okay, now you can put your bird down if you want, and then put your your uh, nest. But I want him to sit up. So you can see them. So I'm just going to leave the nest there so I can judge where my bird needs to go. And I'm going to glue him down. Okay, but I'm going to put dimensionals on the nest. Got to have some kind of dimension. Uh oh, we're running out of time. How much time? One minute. One minute warning. One you are. Warning. You are on it, Miss Michelle. Thank you so much. Okay, then I'm not going to be able to do all the other stamping. But I'll show you on, on the finished one what should have happened. <laughs> and to put you, these down, are you going to need much more time, no. Kathy? Then I'm going to no, let you finish. Really. Well, finish yeah, your if I'm going to do the whole thing, yeah. Oh, okay. So belly band and oh, okay. Then, yeah. the music. Flowers. Okay. Okay, so this is the basis of the card. And this in itself completes all of the requirements. Okay. However, on this one, I cut I cut this piece out using the scalloped contour dies. I used a punch and part of the light blue, uh, the what is that? Tahitian Tide sparkle paper, I oh. made a cloud. I put some song and then I made a belly band. Where'd my belly band go? Where is it? Because I punched out Hey, what happened to it? Hanging out with my stamp and seal. <laughs> Here it is. Okay, I used a um, Tahitian tied belly band and I punched out using that, um, that other punch. 
and I stamped from the same stamp set. I did the, the uh, branch and this says, you've got something to celebrate. And I put some um, gold butterflies on it. So that's my card. Thank Good you, Miss Kathy. Thank you. All righty. So I'm going to go. Why is my. Huh. Hold on, y'all. Somehow or the other, my, my desktop mis disappeared. Um, there we go. We're back. Now you see all the mess that we have. There we go. Sorry about that. Somehow I went to sleep. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead. Let me spotlight my workstation here so we can get started. So I'm going to share with you my cards at the end that I finished um, because I went through many iterations of trying to figure out what I was going to do in order to meet the requirement uh, for today. So let me share with you the pieces and parts of uh, the cards that we're going to need for today to make this card. I am also doing a fancy fold because that's part of the requirement. And so the card base that we're gonna work on, use is a five and an eighth by eight and a half, scored at the four and a quarter. We're gonna need a piece of designer series paper that is three by five and a quarter. We're gonna need a piece of cardstock that mats, that's going to be Ooh, at one eighth of an inch. Huh? Spotlight your desk. It is. Okay. Can you see it now? Yeah, thank you. Sorry, YouTube was behind. I apologize. Oh, okay. All right, hold on. I got to do it again. Oops. Spotlight. There we go. All right. So you're going to need a piece that mats that is one eighth of an inch bigger. So that's going to be three and one eighth by five and three eighths. You're going to need another piece of designer series paper. You can use the opposite side of the one that you used. And this is going to be seven eighths of an inch by five and a quarter. Or you can find something else if you wanted. For the inside of the card, you're going to need a piece that's four inches by five and three eighths of an inch. And you're going to need a piece for the outside. I haven't cut this yet, so we'll see what size this needs to be. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in our trimmer and I, for this one, I'm gonna bring in my smaller trimmer. Uh, this was only available, not even for a very long period of time, um, a couple seasons ago. And what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna just trim one inch from any, any side. We're gonna trim one, end, eight, one inch off on each side, on one side. You can set this aside because you're probably going to need this for something else. Okay. And so what you're left with is you're left with a panel. You cut one inch off. So now this is three and one quarter by five and a half. Okay. Make sure you burnish our folds. And so we're going to work on the inside piece. So we're going to take this four inch by five and three eighths inch panel. We're gonna need the one inch by five and three eighths. And we're also going to need the others, the seven eighths piece of designer series paper. And we're going to adhere all of those together, starting with the seven eight inch piece. And again, I prefer liquid glue. I do use all of the others, but my preference is liquid glue. Um, for someone like myself who, absolutely cannot do anything in a straight line. I need a little bit of extra time to make sure things are lined up properly. So there we go. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna line this up on the inside on this white panel right here. Okay, gonna leave about a, an eighth of an inch border. We don't need that big of a border. And again, using your grid lines to help you line things up your grid paper, <coughs> excuse me, 
I'm just going to measure and line it up about an eighth of an inch. And there we have, this is done. All right, if you're going to stamp a sentiment, oops, I somehow shifted that a little bit. If you're gonna stamp a sentiment or an image on the inside, now would be the time to do it. I'm gonna leave it blank for now because I don't know what I want it to say. And I'm just going to add this to the inside of my card panel, of my card base. I guess this is a modified gatefold, I guess. Would you say that it's a modified gate? No, it's not a gate fold. I don't know what, what I'm calling it, but it is a fancy fold for me. <laughs> and so what you'll see from that is you have a piece that looks like this thus far. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna adhere our bigger piece of DSP, the three inch by five and a quarter. And the beautiful thing about Stampin' Up! Designer Series paper, you guys, is that it has two sides that you can choose whichever side you want to use, depending on what mood or image you're going for. And I went with the tea, I think this was the Tea Party, is that what it's called? Tea Party uh, Designer Series paper from the new uh, 2022 to 2024 catalog. And that's what we're going to do with this guy. And then just adhere this to the panel. Okay, so pretty much our card is assembled. Now we get to go with the design and the paper piecing and the rest of the card. The paper piecing that I'm going to do is the one that typically takes the most time. Again, making sure that you leave a little bit of a border. And so this is what your card base is going to look like. All right, so for my card, I chose, I'm using the Places in the Heart stamp set. And I'm going to go with this image. And my congratulations is going to be all about uh, motherhood. I don't know any, I have no, no graduates. I have none of that stuff in my life. So I'm like, okay, I had to think really hard about what I wanted to do. So I went ahead and I pre-stamped the image. And I also stamped it out on another piece of designer series paper. I think this was an in color flirty flamingo, I believe it was, I think. And I stamped it, okay? So let me point this out for just a quick second so you can see. When I'm gonna do my paper piecing, all I wanna do is have her shirt be the thing that I'm paper piecing. So when I'm cutting, right, I'm just gonna follow the lines and cut everything out around so that I have what the piece that I need, okay? Um, let me see. And let me start this out for you just so you can see how that process goes, okay? And I try to minimize as, as small of a piece of paper that I can um, it just makes paper piecing a little bit easier, okay? So I'm gonna start on this side and you can see, I'm gonna just, and when you're paper piecing, you really just wanna get just inside the artist's lines, okay? And again, when you're paper piecing is a form of fussy cutting, and so all you're gonna do is turn your right, your left hand or your non-dominant hand. Let's just do that. My non-dominant hand is my left hand. And I'm gonna cut or cut everything that I need to, to ensure that the mother's shirt is what's going to have the pattern paper on it, okay? See, and I did that wrong because all of this needed to be cut. Well, let me show you. When you're done cutting, through the magic of television, this is kind of what you should have. This is what's left, okay? Now, if I can find my piece that I already paper cut, huh? Well, isn't that a blip? 
I went through it's all really of this my- to make sure that I had, all- there it is, here she is. And this is what <laughs> I ended up with, <laughs> right? And so I'm just going to add a little bit of glue and I'm going to use my reverse tweezers to help me put everything in place once I've added my adhesive. And again, you don't really need a lot of glue because when you, when you uh, press it down, you might end up having it smoosh out. The beauty of uh, the Tombow Mono is that it is it does dry clear. So if there's any um, excess that smooshes out, um, it'll dry clear on the project. Okay. So guys, there you go. I just gave mom a beautiful polka dotted top where she did not have one before. Okay. Um, I think I want to leave her face in relief. I'm not going to add any color uh, to the face. And I think I'm going to leave the baby also in white. That's part of my, my aesthetic. And I'm going to stamp congratulations. And I'm going to take the congratulations from the, uh, which set did I use? I took congratulations from the Charm, charming sentiments set. Is that right? Yep. Charming sentiments is the name of it. And I use this image. Congratulations. And I'm going to go in my designer series. My in color was the um, Orchid Oasis. And I'm going to stamp my sentiment in Starry Sky. Tap, tap, tap. And I wanna make sure, so I'm gonna stamp it on something else to make sure it looks good. Yep, good color. And I'm just gonna stamp congratulations. Right. I'm gonna stamp it right here. All right, so now that my image is pretty much done, now I can see this is kind of where the size that I want it to be. I'm just gonna trim using the trimmer. Cut my congratulations off because I'm probably gonna put that in a punch. Uh, so we're gonna have a piece right now, it's two and a half. And I think I want it to be about two and a quarter. And then let's see, two and a quarter by four. That's how I decided the length of my, my, uh, my art, my, oh my goodness, my image piece. I didn't have any idea. Sometimes you have to stamp the image first and then decide what you're gonna do with it and then decide your dimensions from there. Okay, so we said this was a, I think it was two inches, two and a quarter by four. So this is two and a quarter by four. So my matting piece needs to be, I'm gonna go an eighth of an inch bigger. So two and a quarter will now be two and, three eighths and my four inch piece is going to be four and one eighth. Okay. And that's what we're going to have here. What my life would be without any sort of dimensions is not, it's not anything I want to know about. So I'm going to cut a piece of dimensional of, from the um, foam adhesive sheets. Um, this was two inches, right? This was two and a quarter. So I'm gonna cut my piece to be about two inches. and add it 
here, like so. This is why I use liquid glue, you guys. I also make lots of mistakes, All right? And I'm gonna use, take that off. And now I'm gonna adhere this uh, to this piece like so. So I have an eighth of an inch border all the way around. I probably should have done bigger, but that's okay. And just like in Kathy's case, we don't want, you got to be mindful of where you put your liquid adhesive because you don't want to close your card shut, okay? Or your whatever adhesive you're going to use. And this is where we use our fingers as guides, y'all. <laughs> this is where we use our fingers as guides as to where we should put adhesive. And there we have that. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is work on my sentiment. This is the classic label punch. No, that's too small. I'm probably just going to stick with trimming it just to be on the safe side. And I don't need it to be too, too big. So again, there's no measuring on this one. I'm just going to use the trimmer and get it as narrow as close to as, as I can. Okay. Trim a little bit off here. And then you can go from here with the sentiment. Now you can go ahead and measure a little bit to get your matting, matted piece, okay? So we, we are looking at a piece, a strip that's about, it's a little bit bigger than a quarter. Is that a half? Let me see. It's a half. So we're gonna go with a piece that's a little bit bigger than a half inch by two and three quarters, okay? So we had a half inch. So we're gonna go with three quarters of an inch. And what did I say that was two and a quarter, right? So I'm gonna go with the two and a half. Make sure. And on this side, really all you have to do, no measurement involved. Go ahead and add your sentiment to your matted color. This one I think was a uh, shaded spruce, I think. And then you just stick this guy in there and go ahead and trim off your side. No measurements involved. And there we go. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some um, dimensionals, some more of the sheet, if I can find my stuff. Cut a strip. Add my strip. And I have one more element to add from the roll of the dice to make my card complete. Anybody remember what that one is? Bling. bling. That's right, it's bling. And I got plenty of that because I buy that by the truckload. <laughs> okay, um, let's put one here. Let's put a smaller one here. And here, the rule of three, the rule of odds, I call it, not the rule of three. 
And there you go. You guys, this is my fun fold. I have my fun fold. I have my bling. I have my pattern paper. I have my in color. What else did I miss? Did I miss anything? That's it. Fun That's fold. It. All right, so, but I created some other ones because I went through some iterations, y'all, trying to figure out what to do. So let me share with you some other of the designs that I made also with this design using the Parakeet Party. This was the Starry, I'm sorry, the Sweet Sorbet Designer Series. And this was an old retired stamp set. Um, uh, this was called on to adventure and I love this it was perfect I wanted to do congratulations on your next adventure um, but I really wanted for the folk for this card to uh, or for this project is to make something that was with the current current products that we have this was another that we did that I did using the same layout different size different dimensions and one thing, one more thing I wanted to share with you guys is if you have, I wanted to do an envelope and this one's gonna be really quick. I'm not gonna bring any, any cutting tools or anything like that in the mix. Here's what I'm gonna do. This is a piece of eight by eight designer series, uh, designer pattern paper. You can use whatever um, you have. This is eight by eight. It works for a for A2 card. And all I need to do is make sure that I put this on a diagonal with the point even at this at the top. And I'm just gonna fold it origami style to make my own envelope for this card. Okay, kind of make sure it's a little even. Pull up. And burnishing your, your folds is definitely something that's gonna be very important. Pull in. on each side and it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, it is envelopes. So this is something if you want some, a fun envelope, if you have some funky designer series paper or uh, pattern paper or something that you wanna use, this would be what you could use to make your envelope, okay? You now have the basic shape. All I'm going to do is go in and snip off these little triangles that we made and then add adhesive and you will have created your own um, envelope to make your own to send to whomever you're sending it to. And you didn't need an envelope punch board. You didn't need any other tools, just the paper. Now it works for the A2. I haven't tried it with any other sizes. Have you guys tried making your own envelopes uh, no, freehand no. with anything other? I've no, never done not this way. Cool. Okay. I will, though. <laughs> I always have so much on uh, pattern paper because, you know, sometimes you go into like the Michaels or whatever, and I use that stuff for when I'm trying out stuff. I don't ever want to use my, uh, my, my good Stampin' Up! paper <laughs> when I'm trying something out for the first time. So I always have a stash um, of products, of paper that I buy and use for that purpose. And then with my score tape, I'm just gonna go in, add my score tape. And I add the score tape to the, the, um, to the inside because it's easier to do it that way. And then you don't have to worry about, oh, did I add too much? Well, you can't add too much. All right, add a little score tape here on the inside. Like so. Then I'm gonna add the rest of score tape up here. I'm gonna cut another piece of score tape. Uh, Almost finished. How am I doing on time, Michelle? Five minutes over. Uh oh. Hey, because I invited your friends to watch. The you did. Who did, did you invite? You know, stamp time. <laughs> All right, and then here Question. we go. 
Georgiana and Franks is watching. She said hello. Hi, Georgiana. Becca's Thank you guys for sharing with us on um, our roll of the die episodes because we still have to roll for next month. Hey, leave us a comment, right? Um, right now, I think we're just doing our, our episodes monthly. I haven't asked the girls if they want to do it any more frequently than that, but drop us a line. Let us know if you'd like to see us to co uh, come back um, regularly more than a, once a month. Let us know. I'm not promising you that we will. Well, we would like to know. <laughs> we would like to know. And then, of course, we put this in here and our envelope and card is done. All right, let me remove the spotlight from myself. You guys, thank you guys for joining us so much. We had so much fun. Oh, we got to roll the die for next month. Oh, oh I can't get to my dies. Oh. Can I, get, oh, I can't get to my dies. Are they in prison? What what my, oh, something's going on with my drawer and I can't get to my dies. Oh, that's what it is. Oh, okay, I'm going to have to roll the dies later, you guys, and let you know what next month's roll of the die happens to be. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So you guys, um, give us, give me a minute and I'm gonna take a few minutes at the end to upload links to each of the demonstrators' uh, blogs and uh, their YouTube channels and their contact information. That way you guys, if you wanted for uh, uh, instructions, uh, tutorials, um, you should check out everybody's um, Facebook and blog to find that type of information. We'll put links to everything in the description box below until the second, what, I don't know what the date is. Michelle, do you know what the date is in July? Uh, the second, second Sunday, Sunday in July. Would be the 10th. Okay, July. so right as of today, the 10th of July, we will come back to you with another episode of Roll of the Die. Anything for you guys? No, thanks for having us. I'm gonna be working on my blog, so give me some time before I update my blog with the measurements okay. and everything. Perfect. So give us a few minutes. Um, at, I, I will have all of the links in the uh, YouTube description as soon as I can. And then our blogs will go live. I don't, I can't speak for anybody else, but I will try to have my blog live uh, by the end of the day today. Until next time, you guys, happy stamping. Bye. Bye.